All right, in this video, we're going to look at an example of a wire animation. And by the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this square with the colors that kind of rotate around through this. Um, I also have an equilateral triangle up here. That tutorial's coming soon too on how to make an equilateral triangle in KOWP. It takes a little bit of uh, right triangle trigonometry, a little bit of pre-calculus. Then we have a hexagon down here for your enjoyment as well. I will be updating KOWP toots right here in the near future. I'm in the process of actually making another computer change. Uh, more on that later whenever I get uh, that change or whenever that change does occur. Uh, so I'm back on the old school laptop for right now. Nonetheless, um, other things I want to talk about before I jump into the tutorial. So, you know, t give me two or three minutes to go over some things with you and then we'll dive into this. Uh, for the folks who make requests, if you want to make a request over at my website, I have not change the way you make a request, but please read everything below. Um, I'm starting to get a bunch of requests. I've been getting a bunch for a while now. And it's when some people were sending me their presets or their uh, components and some of them email them to me, some of them were sending them through Telegram or linking them through Hangouts. Please put everything in this request. Whether you're doing a math, uh, math request or a KOWP request, make that request through this form. I'm asking you to do that because, you know, between things going to email, Hangouts, Telegram, other apps that I use to communicate with people, it's kind of hard to keep up with which one was where. But, but instead, if you make a request through here, it's in one spot, I can easily have access to it and I can streamline this and get it done faster for you. Also, if you're sharing your own files, whether it be from like your Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever, whatever link you put in here, please keep that file in your Dropbox or your Google Drive. Don't delete it because then if I try to go to access it when I'm ready to work on it and you've already deleted it, I haven't forgot about you. It's just that I will not access that file until I get to that particular tutorial to do or until I get to uh, where you are in line if you want me to look at your preset or component. And with that said, you know, uh, tutorials will take some time for me to complete. I am staying very busy with those. And if you look at that, you can click here or just come up here to request and come to upcoming tutorials. This is a little bit different in the fact that now you can kind of keep up whether your Android requests, math requests, uh, things I might do, and then KOWP user preset comps to troubleshoot. So, you know, I have some of these to look at for people. And this was a main thing too. If you're sending me files to look at, again, leave the links in the description when you make the request. Quest. That will make things a lot easier for me. I appreciate that. But uh, in here, this is where you can keep up with the tutorial request. You know, as you can see, the line is very, very, very long. <laughs> so it's going to take me a while to get through all of these. And I'm skipping 3D animations right now. I am working on 3D animations. It's just that I'm not uh, proud of my work enough yet to do a tutorial on it. So we're going to still wait on that. Weather animations. I did a private project a while back for a user and um, they, this user sent me all of his pictures, whether they were PNGs of rain and leaves and lightning bolts. And um, this is what, let me fast forward a little bit through this, but this is what uh, I put together for him, like in a windy situation, you know, you have leaves flying across the screen. Uh, what else do we have going on here? cloudy so you can see the clouds going through the background but these are not my images there's some raindrops windshield wipers and i think there's some lightning bolts in here somewhere i don't know there's hail nonetheless oh there's a lightning bolt right there <laughs> but um nonetheless what these pictures were not mine these were the user the user who wanted this private project done you know he emailed me the files and then i created everything for him so i don't have my own weather images to use yet um I found some open source ones scattered out throughout the internet, but when I tried to combine them all together, it was just ugly. And, and I just said, I don't want to do it. So for any of you who do graphic design, if you have uh, if some PNG images of some weather images that you don't mind sharing, I need some clouds, some lightning bolts, some raindrops, and I need, to, I need them to have a transparent background. If you don't mind sharing that and mind me using it for tutorial, Share away. I would really appreciate that. Um, that way I can make it somewhat eye appealing as we go through that long tutorial for weather animations. So all that said, that was probably longer than two or three minutes. Let's talk about wire animations. So we're going to do the square here. And 
I'm just going to start with a blank preset. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, this looks nothing like what it does on the screen, uh, on the home screen. So go ahead and get used to that if you're not used to that by now. Sometimes your advanced editor will not look like what you have on the home screen. So let's just start uh, from blank. I'm gonna load a blank preset. All right, and let's go ahead and create a few things. Um, I'm gonna create some globals. I'm gonna create four colors. You can fast forward through this part if you know what I'm doing. Create a red, let's do a C2. Now I'm doing four colors because I'm doing a square right now. What did I just do? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my C3. And I'm doing a square and the way I want this to work and you'll see how we can actually modify this in a little while as well is since I have four sides I want four colors and you can see how they're going to chase each other so to speak so let's do a kind of a light blue let's do a yellow or a green and then we'll do a yellow all right now there's a cool effect by creating globals we can come in here and make some of these colors transparent and then you can actually get a, a totally different effect uh, in regards to your wire animation and we'll see that towards the end. Let me see is there anything else I really want to focus on in regards to mm, no I think we're fine with that. We can create more globals but I'm going to leave it as it is. Let's go ahead and add our shape. I'm going to do a square in this tutorial and I'm going to position this square in the center. This square is ultimately going to serve as a clip. We're going to clip uh, a color wheel and I've done color wheels in the past before too. So this square I'll make it up at 400. Why not? Make it a little bit bigger. Let's go over to paint. Let's set the stroke. I'm going to put it up to about 10. All right. And ultimately like I said this square is going to be a clip but for now I'm going to leave it like that. So now let's create an overlap group and then inside of this overlap group this is where we're going to create a color wheel, a color wheel. So inside of this overlap group I'm going to add a circle slice and then we'll come and pop this into the center of the screen. So circle slice and I'll tell you what actually what I need to do right now before I start adjusting the size let me just back out into this overlap group let me go ahead and position it in the center that way we can kind of match things up here. And this circle slice, I'm going to make it big enough so that I can cover uh, the corners of the square or the entire square. So width, I'm going to bump it on out to, let's see where we need to be. That right there should cover everything just fine. So you can adjust that size to your liking. Now since, since my size is 640, a uh, little tip here if you didn't know this, but a circle slice, um, whatever the width is, if you take half the width and make that your height, you will get a perfect pizza slice. Um, I'm not going to go any bigger or smaller, but it, technically you don't even have to go that far. As long as you're going to cover the lines of this square, you're good to go. But I'm just going to go ahead and make it 320, which is exactly half of that. And let's think about exterior angles. <laughs> we really don't have to think about that. This one works quite nice. We want the angle for this circle slice to be 90 degrees, but really um, I'm matching that up with the exterior angle of my whatever shape I'm using, whatever polygon I'm using. Um, but we'll talk more about that later in a future tutorial. So here's one piece. I'm gonna go to paint and I'm gonna set that, oops, I have global colors, don't I? And you'll see why I use globals in a minute to quickly change things. So I'm gonna set that one to C1. All right, so there's our first slice. Now we want to duplicate this and we want to put a slice down here so we have a half circle. So I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to copy and paste. And let's go ahead and change the color of this second one. So I'm going to go to paint and I'm going to change this to C2. So we do see this different color. And we don't want to change the actual 90 degree angle that we have here, but we want to rotate this entire uh, slice. Don't change the angle. If you change the angle you're going to, well I'll show you what happens. If you change the angle you're actually changing that angle of that slice, how big that angle make or how big that angle is so to speak. But now if we want to rotate this slice, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and by me rotating it 90 degrees now we have a half circle. So let's just do this two more times. Copy, paste. Let's do C3 on this. So now we have a green, but let's go back to that shape. And again, don't change the angle, just rotate it. And since we're rotating 90 degrees each time, I'm just gonna go to 180. And now we need to do it one more time for our full circle. And paint C4. And 
let's go, oops, I need to change the rotation on that one to 270. So this one works out nice. This is why I did this one first instead of the triangle or the hexagon. This is the easier of the three that you saw at the beginning of the video. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, let's rotate this thing. So animation of this entire overlap group. That's why I put it inside of an overlap group, all four of these slices. So inside of that overlap group, I'm going to go to animation. We're going to loop. And we're going to rotate. Now, what I want to do is I want it to be a smooth one. Uh, normal has the, the, the slow, like, you know, it speeds up, then it slows down as it starts and ends its animation. But if we set this ease to straight, it's just going to be a consistent rotation. And that's exactly what I want here. Uh, duration, I'll leave it at 10 for right now. We can come back. We could even create a global to adjust that. But for now, I'm going to leave that the way it is. And now here comes the magic. So the square that we have. Let me slide that right here for just a split second. This square here, really I only want to see the colors inside of that stroke in that square that we made. Well, I need to slide my square back up above it in this order inside of our items, inside of our root. I'm going to click on the square, go to FX, and we want to mask. And we can either clip all or clip next module. I'm just going to do clip next module because if you start adding more of these things, you only want to clip the next thing that's right beneath it. Now, this may not look right. We're going to be fine. Trust me. But um, by me selecting square and doing clip next module, it's only going to clip the next one that's beneath it in this order here. So if I save this and go back to the home screen, as you can see, there we have it. Um, so it really looks like you have lines that are chasing each other or really they're rotating and you have that wheel going on in the background. Now some fine tuning here and to also show you a, another cool effect that we can get out of this. First of all, I'm going to go to this animation and I'm going to rotate it a little bit slower. So let's do like uh, four seconds. Let's see what happens there. So save that, go back to the home screen. You know, that, that there you go. So that, that looks a little bit easier to follow and you... Uh, some other things. Oh, yeah, this is what I want to show you, too. Let's take this square and let's actually rotate this square. And that'll give us a cool effect. And let's rotate it in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this clip, this shape square that I have here. And I'm going to go to its animation. I'm going to loop it. Come on. And let's rotate Oh, I remember I want to go the opposite way. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to rotate inverted. I'm going to set it to straight as well. And I'm going to speed or make it go rotate a little bit slower as well. So I'm using the same duration. Um, you can obviously use different things to experiment with this. But if I save that and go back to the home screen, now we have the color wheel going one way and the actual square going the other. So that gives you uh, another totally different effect. And it does not look real smooth on the computer screen, whether that be... My phone looks fine, but it's probably this uh, laptop. Uh, going back to the old school laptop here. And one more thing to show you here too. You know, we have four colors, but we can really just use one color. So um, I mentioned that back at the beginning when we created global colors. I showed you, or I mentioned a different effect you can get here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that square real quick. The square, the clip. I'm going to take its animation away just for a second. So I'm just going to delete that, or you could disable it. And then I'm going to go back to the globals, and I'm just going to uh, keep C1. I'm going to keep the red, but I'm going to make all these other ones completely transparent. So now all we're going to have is one color. And this is going to give you a different effect, and you have a lot of ways that you can customize this uh, based on us just creating basic global colors. So if I save this and go back to the home screen, now all you're going to see is that one line going around a square. Not only that, you can do this as well. Since we have all of these things inside of an overlap group, let's go to that overlap group. I'm not going to delete the other circle slices because I might want them, but nonetheless, I can take this circle slice, this red one here, that was the first one. If I do change its angle, let's make it say uh, like 250 or whatever. I mean, I'm making that angle, the actual, uh, it looks like a Pac-Man really if I take that clip away, but nonetheless, if I save this and go back to the home screen, you're gonna see a longer line uh, getting chased. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's almost like it's chasing itself or something, but anyway, you know, there you have it. You know, using global colors, using a square, using clips to create a wire animation. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.